Welcome to my newly revamped series, Worst Movie Theater Customers. As you can probably guess, this is a series where I talk about the worst movie theater customers I ever had as a movie theater employee. Let's get into it. Here's a fan favorite. Cowboy Hat Guy! As you can probably assess, we called him Cowboy Hat Guy because he wore a cowboy hat every time he came in. He was also racist, homophobic, and all levels of bigotry. He came to see movies, but he would always ask us at the box office if there were any black people in the movie. Not watching it, just in the movie. If you said yes, he would begrudgingly buy a ticket, go watch the movie, and then come out and complain to you about that movie. According to him, Creed 2 had too many black people in it. He also said he hated hidden figures because he paid to watch a movie about a mission to the moon, not about black women complaining. He also saw The Imitation Game and wasn't too happy with this film, saying, This film is BS. Those F slurs did not save a single soul. The real heroes of World War II were the straight white men dying on the front lines. Needless to say, we hated this guy. Outside of his complaints, I've had two odd encounters that took me back. I'll start with the mild one. I engaged in a very normal transaction. He told me the movie, I printed it off, I took his money, I was handing him the ticket and telling him which theater to go to, and completely unprompted, he stops and he goes, Straight white males deserve the same scholarship opportunities as gays, women, and minorities. What the fuck are you supposed to do with that? I just told him theater 8 to the right, and he left. Didn't say another word. Alright, here's the one that's gonna blow your mind. It's got a good twist ending to it, so hold on to your butts. I was working in the concession stand, it was very busy, I had a line forming, I saw Cowboy Hat Guy, and it was his turn to come up. And right as he was walking up, a black woman with a bunch of children around her steps in front of him and starts ordering. And I froze. I thought, oh my god, I'm gonna have to break up a fight. But he didn't react. He didn't do anything. And I was like, is he, is he gonna say something whenever he gets up to me? The woman finishes her order, and then turns and looks at him and says, Anything else, hon? Ah! Cowboy hat guy and this black woman were married. They kissed right in front of me. That fucking broke my brain. We're talking about Boost Mobile Guy. There's a lot to cover here, so I'm gonna have to move quickly through this information, so try to keep up. The reason why we called him Boost Mobile Guy is because he was very proud of the fact that he managed both of our Boost Mobile stores in the city. He preferred the southern one, but he didn't like the north one, because the north one would have the most amount of theft because of thugs. Mmm, that's just a precursor of what's to come. Oh my goodness, that's me playing the role of the Phantom in my high school's production of Phantom of the Opera. And I gotta say, I sucked. This information is important because I was in this show with Boost Mobile Guy's son. So Boost Mobile Guy had to come and see the show, and he fell in love with my portrayal of the Phantom for whatever reason. When I started working at the movie theater shortly after, he would come to that theater, see me, and say, Oh, it's Mr. Phantom! And I'd be flattered because, aw, I'm being treated like a celebrity. It's so fun. And then he would do it again and again and again, and it got very annoying. I later learned from other employees that they absolutely hate this man every time that he comes in. The ladies hated him because whenever he would first meet them, if they were new, he would ask them to turn around for him and he would check their butt size and then mentally compare their butt size to that of a celebrity with a known large posterior. So he would refer to them by nicknames. Nicki Minaj, Iggy Azalea, Kim Kardashian, etc, etc. He was also very racist. He would show up, check to see if we had our police officer security guard in the lobby, check to see if we had black employees working. And if we had both black employees working and our police officer security guard, he would yell, black lives don't matter, blue lives do. Naturally, people would turn against him, the officer would step in his way to protect him, and he got away with it every time because he was buddies with our manager. That theater closed down and I moved on to the next theater, and at this theater, he showed up, of course, and greeted me the same way, Hello, Mr. Phantom! And he showed up quite a bit. Until... Pride Month! We were selling Pride merch for Pride Month. He came in wearing his MAGA hat, 
and looked around at all the rainbows and looked visibly uncomfortable and upset. He went to watch his movie, and that's the last time I ever saw him. His wife regularly came back, and whenever I asked her, oh, is the husband at home? She'd be like, yeah. I'd ask why, and she goes, he just doesn't like coming here. It's just his personal preference. Weird that a Trump supporter wouldn't want to go to a business that supports the LGBTQ plus community or people of color. We're talking about the sexist, and my god, I hate this guy. It was a slow night at work, I was working the concession stand with my co-worker, we'll call her Abby, and we saw this gentleman walking through the lobby towards us with his wife. Here's what he looked like. He was, um, wearing one of these. And one of these. As you're about to find out, he's kind of a walking stereotype of people who wear that kind of attire unironically. So I was working as a runner behind the concession stand, so I was taking care of popcorn and drinks, and Abby was taking care of the money, and asking questions about if they want extra butter, that kind of stuff. This guy comes up to Abby's register with a big smile on his face, and he says, I'd like one large popcorn and two large drinks, please. So I start filling up his popcorn bucket halfway, and I'm waiting for Abby to ask the question, Did you want extra butter on that, sir? And this guy's smile dropped. And he looked directly at Abby, as if to say, how dare you talk to me? Abby asked him again, because she thought maybe he didn't hear her the first time. And he just kept staring at her, as if she had like kicked his newborn puppies. I chimed in, sir, did you want extra butter on that popcorn? Oh yes, absolutely, thank you. What the fuck? So I did my thing and I came over here to get his drink orders. Abby did her job to the letter and asked him, what would you like to drink? And he stared at her again the same way he did before. The, how dare you talk to me look. She asked him again, he still kept staring. I chimed in at this point, sir, what would you like to drink? Oh yes, two Diet Dr. Peppers, please. Thank you so much. I could tell at this point that Abby was fuming, but she was keeping herself as composed as possible. As I was bringing all of his stuff to the counter to slide across to him, Abby told him his final total, and he held out the $20 bill. Not to Abby. This way. Towards me. Sliding his food across, not in front of a register at all. I looked at his 20, I looked at him, and then I said, Sir, I didn't take your order. She did. She's on the register. Give the money to her. And his smile towards me dropped almost immediately. He did not move his arm from that position, but Abby reached over and pretty much had to pry the 20 out of his hand, give him his change, and got him out of there. Do me a favor, if you don't see anything wrong with this man's actions, unfollow me. Radio voice guy. They paid us to sweep messes and pop popcorn, not to come up with creative nicknames. As you can probably glean from the not creative nickname, he had this rich voice that was perfect for radio and actually sounded familiar to a lot of us. We started to speculate that maybe he was one of these personalities at our local radio station who got fired for making racist, sexist, homophobic remarks and for sexually harassing a lot of his co-workers. This was never confirmed, it was merely speculation. The thing that drew our attention to Radio Voice Guy was that he would come to the movie theater late at night alone. And if he was by himself alone, he would always go see the latest rom-com or female-led film. If he was in a theater with a bunch of other people also watching the same film, it was a fairly normal screening, nothing weird about it. But if he was the only one who was watching the movie, <sighs> we'd have to go in and check the theater at the end of the night to make sure no one was left behind or hiding out in there. And whenever we'd pass by the row that Radio Voice Guy was sitting in, there would be a cluster of used napkins on the floor. So we all joked that this guy was just enjoying himself a little too much in those theaters. At least it was a joke for a little while. One of our managers was privy to the joke, uh, and he decided to investigate himself. So he came into a theater one night while the guy was in there by himself. He walked past him, and when he looked down the row, he saw the guy definitely was enjoying himself. <laughs> Needless to say, the manager kicked him out right then and there and told him to never come back. But then my manager quit, and Radio Voice Guy started coming back. 
And if there was a new employee at the box office who wasn't aware that this guy was banned, they would sell him a ticket anyway. But also, Radio Voice Guy stopped coming alone. He would either show up to see a movie late at night with his mom, or with a random woman. And literally, it was a random woman every single time, so he was on dates like crazy. It was very obvious that this guy was just going on dates, and then he was never getting a second date, so he just moved on to the next person. So after he got caught and banned and started coming back, it was like, you know, he was a normal guy just bringing dates out. But still, it's gross to think like, hey, this guy was doing stuff in our theater. And when he found out the manager who banned him quit, he decided to come back. Look, I just think this guy is icky, all right? The tag team. I worked at Alamo Draft House, and one of the most annoying things that we had to deal with were people showing up late for their movie. And Alamo has a strict latecomer policy. You cannot show up to your movie after 15 minutes past the showtime. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through, where's my seat? Do you see how annoying that is? And when you bought a ticket online from us, it gave you a policy list that you have to agree to before you can even make the purchase, including that no latecomers policy that tells you you will not be admitted 15 minutes after the showtime. But as is usual, people don't follow policy and they still show up late. A way we prevented this in-house was at our restaurant and bar, our servers were told to check people's tickets and make sure to keep track of when they need to be going to their movies and when to close out their tabs. One of the servers in the bar did not do that this night, and a couple came over to us very upset. At the same time, another family was also being led away from the theater because they showed up extremely late. I dealt with the family, and my coworker dealt with the couple. The family was understandably upset because they were used to 30 minutes of previews, not our 15 minutes of previews. The couple was understandably upset because it kind of was our fault. Our server did not tell them that they were supposed to have gone to their movie. I was dealing with the family, doing their refund for their online ticket with the dad's credit card, and as we all know, whenever you refund a credit card, it takes about two to three business days for that money to show up on your account. I told this to the dad, and he went, no, I want my money tonight. I explained that it's not possible, but the money is on its way to his credit card, and if he wanted it to go faster, he's going to have to contact his bank or his credit card provider. He still insisted, I want my money tonight, cash in hand. I got my manager, my manager came over, heard the same spiel and said, sir, if you're asking us to give you more money than you are due, that's larceny and we can call the police. And the dad said, call the cops. And they left. We didn't see them again. My coworker was dealing with the couple and they were egging on the family because they were hearing their complaints and like, yeah, this place is BS. My coworker finished their transaction, handed them the credit card and their receipt. And the girl takes her drink, pours it out on the counter, sets the glass down, and they storm out. We head over to start cleaning up the drink, and my coworker notices there's a phone in the puddle. It was none of ours. And the guy came back in doing a walk of shame and was like, Did you find my girlfriend's phone? She poured the drink on her own phone. <laughs> Mother of the year. None of us like whenever a baby starts crying in the middle of a movie that we've been waiting to see for a long time, but most people have the gumption to say, my baby's crying, let me take it into the hallway and make sure that it calms down before I come back in. And then there are other people who are going to hell. I was working the floor crew one day and someone came out of the theater and came up to me and said, hey, there's a woman in my theater, she has a baby and it's crying and she's not really doing anything about it. So I was ready to go in there and do my job, let a woman know, like, hey, you gotta take your baby into the hallway. But I walked into the theater, and I didn't hear a loud baby crying. The only thing that I heard was muffled baby cries. So I start walking through the theater, checking all the rows, and I just don't see a baby anywhere. But I can still hear its muffled cries, I just can't figure out from where. So I leave the theater and I walk over to the box office to use our phone to contact our manager who was upstairs and let them know the situation, if they could do anything about it. And as I was getting over there, someone storms up to me and says, the baby is crying again. So I get on the horn with our manager, he comes down, he walks into the theater, and there's the muffled baby crying again. So he has me walk down this side of the theater and he walks down the other side, and I see him almost immediately beeline down a row to a woman. And she has her baby in her lap, 
and her hand clasping its mouth, and that's why we heard muffled baby sounds. She was smothering the baby to keep it quiet. So my manager asks her to go into the hallway until the baby stops crying, and then she can come back in, and she obliges just fine, not really saying anything, but definitely feels a little disgruntled. So she's in the hallway, the baby's crying, and it eventually soothes itself out, and she goes back into the theater. And it's all peaceful for about 15 minutes. And then someone bursts out of the theater and comes up to me and is like, the baby is crying again. We need you to like get her out of here or something. So I immediately call my manager. My manager comes down and we both walk into the theater and this is what we find. Oh, shush yourselves. It's a baby. It's what they do. Like no exaggeration. She is standing in front of the screen holding her baby who is crying, screaming at everyone who is shushing at her. It was wild. So the manager immediately jumps in, asks her to leave and never come back again. And then we gave out free passes to everyone after the show was done. Happy ending.